actually uh, black hole actually, uh, binaries uh, about actual probability and also about uh, black hole spectral states. I'm from Shanghai Observatory, and most of the work I'm going to present uh, actually uh, come from my group, uh, two students and one postdoc. So we know actual binaries are bright, bright actual uh, sources in the sky, and why we want to study these sources? There are a group of, uh, you know, actual binaries are those brightest sources that we can see in the galactic bright region, and. As we know, there are only a few persistent black hole exit binaries. Most of them are actually transients, but they are very good targets because from quiescence to our bursts, these sources will be able to trace a large range of luminosity, which means it can, the luminosity can increase by five to even 10 orders magnitude. So these sources are actually very good targets to probe accretion regimes from what theory proposed, for example, uh, ADAF to synthetic solutions. Uh, the classical picture, or the popular picture, of black hole state, spectral states is like that. And so here is a, a very uh, classical uh, geometry proposed about more than 10 years ago. And it's about an uh, increase of the mass sequence rate and with changes in the Christian geometry. For example, there's a trans transition radius, there's a hot flow. And on the other hand, with RXTE, we are able to determine not only spectral uh, state, but also uh, variability. So in this plot, what I show is that there's a correspondence between the spectral state, for example, low heart state, high soft state, that's our two major spectral states. And there's a corresponding uh, Fourier power spectrum, which means in high soft state, we see a power law noise, maybe there's a break. And in the lower heart state or intermediate state, we see a bending noise or several components with some QVOs. But under this picture, so mass screen rate is the, the primary uh, parameter. Uh, and on the black hole spectral state, uh, from a observational point of view, there's a correspondence. So this uh, two, uh, one is the Christian geometry, the other, uh, which is related with the mass geometry, the other is uh, any spectral and power spectral states. Uh, this is what I'm going to talk about. Okay, so there are also, if we look at individual black hole transient outbursts, what we, we see is the kind of evolution, this is how it's ratio, this is intensity. Then what we see is kind of Q type uh, loops that it will trace during a bright hole transient outburst. And the most important thing is that during this uh, luminosity, increase on luminosity and also spectral transitions, we see, as we know, we see different power spectra. And this also characterizes states. But there's one thing that we know is there's not only one Q loop. Actually, there are different loops. Uh, the bright hole transient will trace different loops uh, during different outbursts. And actually, this is about what, a, what is the second parameter, other than the mass, mass sequence rate. Uh, and this I'm going to talk about in this talk. And yes, there's another thing that I want to talk about. So this is another picture you know, proposed uh, in by Chris Town, before. And let's look at the spectra. So for this uh, black hole states, there, if we look at spectra, we'll immediately know that if we go further down in soft x-rays, then we will also be able to probe the hard component. So, so I'm going to talk about also this, this thing. It's about variability towards soft energies. And it can be a probe of spectral content. For example, discriminate whether the variability is coming from a pivoting of the polar index or it's just a simple you know, luminosity, luminosity variation. So, and also, we, are, we will, might be able to probe you know, the photon uh, energy of the C photons. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about is why the variability towards soft energies uh, so we need a, bro a broadband view of all spectral states and spectral states. And the other thing is about mass sequence rate. So we, what we know is mass, mass sequence rate is not, the, is not everything. And so we want to know what's the second parameter. And so, okay. As for energy content or ability components, as we, we all already know from our RXT, that in low-run state, in high-soft state, uh, 
or in very high state, there's a tendency that, you know, towards uh, lower energies, there's a, uh, the decreasing in the variability amplitude. And this is a C-type C -type, A type, B type QPO, and it also shows the same thing. When, we, when the energy range uh, approaches the, this component, then we see really uh, low amplitude var 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 variations. Okay. Even extreme is in some uh, observations, we can see even uh, in different energy bands, we see the QPO at different frequency. Okay, this is something uh, extreme. Uh, on the other hand, if we really decode, decompose the variability component and uh, you know, uh, consider uh, component or variable component, then we uh, people already found that the persistent component, the constant component, might be just a, a black body type. So that means that maybe if we look at the disk variability, then it's really small. So, and there's one thing that we don't know. We know in soft state it's a power law noise in terms of variability, even using RTE. But we don't know how the power spectra from the low power state type evolves into this power law and how the power law noise emerges. Okay. So we, we got an opportunity um, from a source which is a black hole transient marked J 1659. It's a very special source because it is evolves really slowly. Uh, the other thing is that it's at high altitude, so we have better uh, statistics uh, in terms of measure the soft accuracy spectrum. So here is a work by from Tomasos group. Uh, so we, we can see that during our burst, this is the RIT observations. It shows the increasing of the disk component and decreasing of the power component. And if we look at here, is a measurement of, for example, the unit disk temperature the variability. And what we see is that the increasing of the unit temperature above to more than 0 0.5 keV, then we see a sharp drop of the variability. So this, this immediately shows that when we see the disk component, then the variability <coughs> drops significantly. So this is what about the roughly the observations. And actually, if we look into this in detail, what we found is, is like this. So we can really study variability above 2 kV, for example, combined, uh, with X, uh, Swift XRT and also RXT. And what we see is really a typical thing, what we see in uh, with RT in other black hole X-transit. It shows the limit noise components, QPOs, and during the rising phase of the outburst, it really shows an increasing of the frequency of the C-type. Here, uh, you can see clearly the possible. But the, the most important thing is below 2 kV. So we can really see the emergence of the disk component so we can see, you know, not ma much difference between these two pulse spectra, but up to this point, then what we see is the pulse spectra below 2 kV is about just a power noise, and here still remains what we know is a hard state or, or intermediate state pulse spectra. Okay, so this is that. So we see actually this power uh, pulse spectra is just you know soft state type pulse spectra, and this is hard state or intermediate pulse spectra. So basically, we see distinct power spectra between soft band and half band. So before we know that power noise, you know, is just a soft state power, spectrum, but we see both simultaneously. Okay. So, but the QPO only see in the half band, only see in the half band. So if we investigate this in more detail, then what we found is that we really see, uh, you know, the. The, in soft band with XRT, for example, here below 2 kV, we see you know power noise, something like that, and and you know just above that 2 to 4 kV, then we see really in the band limit noise. And if we go further, you know using RC data up to 6 kV, then it really shows the QPO. Okay. So what is like? So we know like this is evolutions. We know that. Simultaneously, we in below two kV we see a power noise, and might be with a cutoff here, and in hard band below above two kV then we see the bending noise with QPOs. So it's like we see the hard state or intermediate state power spectra in the hard band, and we see the high soft state power spectra in the soft band. So both you know uh, pulse, kind of power spectra coexist. So uh, 
And there might be an oscillation of the drop a cutoff frequency here with this break frequency or the QPO. We also <coughs> try to find more observations and we go to using uh, uh, XMM Newton. And these are observations, uh, several observations uh, of GRX 1915. We can see clear C type QPOs. And if we really perform the analysis, and this is our work, and what we get is that we really see the local QPO in the hard band, in the in power band, 1.5 to 8.0 kV. But if we only study the power spectrum below 2.5 kV, it's really a power noise. And notice that this part of the power noise actually is power is much larger than than the, the, the bending mean of noise component which you see in the in the power band. So and also in other uh, XMM observations, we also find similar things. We, only c we can only see the low frequency QPO in the hard component. So similar results is found for other sources. Okay, so this so it comes to this kind of picture. It's like the power, spe power spectrum, basically is a power spectrum state actually depends on which spectral component we are looking at. So this is a low luminosity hard state. So the disk photons were not dominant and this variability because it's low amplitude, then it's ne negligible. And what we see is only the variability com comes from this hot region. And it shows only a band limit noise component with QPO. And these are hot photons. And because the soft photons, soft photons uh, hasn't uh, you know, entered into the sweet XRP band. But then when the source evolves, then to a high luminosity, hard or intermediate state, then what do we see is the kind of this kind of power spectrum. We see the hard component, which shows bending noise and QPO like this. And maybe a little bit polar noise. And in the soft band, we see only a polar noise. So, so basically we see disk emission, and we can also see the hot flow emission. And we see different variability from the com two components. So th this is a, a, the first topic about about uh, black hole power spectral state. So I don't have time. Uh, have 10, minutes. 10 minutes? 10 minutes, okay, great. Okay, so I move on to the next topic. So this is about why we have, what, what's the reason causing the black hole transit tracings different kills? Okay, so <coughs> as we can see here, the two uh, transit outbursts in our one, uh, a neutral star transit, and two of different amplitude. For example, this is amplitude. And what we found out is that the black dots actually represent the hard X-ray flux. And we can immediately see that the source reaches different hard brightness of the hard state during different outbursts. Okay, so basically the hard to soft transition actually occurs at different luminosities in the same source. So there's no uncertainties in the measurements of the uh, Come back object mass, distance, orbital period, all these things. So on the difference can only come from the equation. And there's another phenomenon which is very famous, is about the parallel track phenomena. So we have people here, Mariano, and we know that in individual sources, we see these kind of tracks, which means that the same keeper frequency or the same actual color, actually we can observe it quite large range of luminosities. So it imposes some uh, problem for standard theory that we're only using a massive parameter to model these solutions. <coughs> and here is the Kirlitz QPO versus the Nazi for all the bright exit binaries with detection of Kirlitz QPOs. So this is a parallel track phenomena. The Nazi can span, can span up to two hour magnitude in user star systems. So this actually the two things, hysteresis and this parallel track actually all about the second parameter. So what is second parameter other than the massive queen rate? So from the parallel track phenomena, actually it, is, it determines the flux track on which a source stays. And for the hysteresis effect of state transitions, as we know, the transition mass occurs at different masses. Actually, it, it, it is a, a factor that determines the mass at which the hard to solve state transition to occur. Okay, let's go back to the plot of two outbursts in the flex one. As we can see clearly, there's a proportionality. So the transitional velocity 
of a smaller outburst actually uh, okay the transition mass actually correlates with the outburst amplitude so this is a correlation so the luminosity of the hot to soft state transition actually were not arbitrarily chosen by the system actually there's a correlation the transition velocity and the outburst peak velocity correlates so something determines this more examples i just show more examples here you can see this is a black hole exit transit you can see different outbursts you can see the hard soft peak hard peak is really reaches you know proportion in a in a, in, a, in a sense that it's really pro proportional to each other but remember that the peaks are not at the same time so there might be a, a, a there should be a time shift a uh, time difference of uh, up to 50 days, something like that for, for GX3 and GX MS4, okay? More sources, a class one, the same thing. And uh, the transition mass can actually can, uh, can <coughs> spend by uh, an order magnitude. So this is uh, really an uh, extreme case. And more things, in neutron star system, it's a precision source. It is not um, a transient, but it's a flaring source type. So it has flares, and it also shows similar thing. So the propagandity actually we can only contribute to <coughs> equation phase. So different flares maybe have different initial conditions, and then it has you know cause the outburst with different properties. And actually this kind of thing, uh, different outburst actually contains information about the initial condition. So a sweet bat and combined with RSM provide us with the opportunity to study these state transitions because we can really identify special states using Harding ratio between the two instruments. And so basically we confirm there's a two major special states as we show here is a histogram of the Harding ratio distribution. And actually, because we can identify special states, then we can use this to really determine, you know, identify special state transitions and can perform a systematic study of all the state transitions observed by this, uh, you know, combining with the two missions. Uh, so this, for example, this is a source with uh, different flares, and there's a you know, hard ratio really shows the transition between the two states. And so we can use these uh, uh, positions to unify the state transition in persistent sources and also transient sources, and also unify history. For example, from infinitely small flares in persistent sources and bright outbursts in transient sources. So what do we get is, we actually found that the hard to solve transition mass actually spans by two orders of magnitude, and that correlates with the peak noise of the falling soft state or peak noise of the outburst. And this actually, we found correlation in indivi individual sources. But here, which we put all the sources together, then, then we really see a very good correlation. So basically, it, it tells us about that it holds for both mini flares in precision sources and bright outbursts. It holds for both transient and precision sources. It also holds for black holes and neutron stars. And no luminosity saturation. Why there's no luminosity saturation? It means because it means the uh, physics allows bright outbursts and also brighter low heart state. Okay, so brighter low heart state—that's the most important thing, because it means that physics. Uh, okay, so if we go an outburst which reaches any luminosity, then we probably can have reach a very bright heart state. Okay. So we we found that there's actually a correlation between. Uh, the transition velocity and also the slope of the outburst during the rise. So actually the slope of the outburst matters and we, we reach this kind of picture. So we have two outbursts of different amplitude and if the rise times is about the same, then we can roughly uh, see the proportionality. So the transition velocity here is different. This is a hard state regime, so transit at different velocity and that correlates with the peak velocity of different flares. So, so basically, we identify a hard state regime, which we know theoretical models gives a threshold, which is a few percent anytime. So below that, there's a classical hard state regime. But from the outburst, we, we actually identify another hard state regime. And this regime only corresponds to flares or outbursts. And this regime actually corresponds to a you know, long stationary equation regime. So this is about what we get. Actually, um, so we know recently there's a transient in M31, it's a URS transient, it's a low mass F binary, so it's similar to galaxy black hole transients, but it actually reached a very high, very bright, uh, a high luminosity in the hard state. So if we are using the report, uh, the report numbers from there, 
then our axiom of this uh, luminosity is about, for 10 solar mass black holes, it's about, okay. So 10 solar mass black holes is about a 60% energy. And because I, I know, because of this, uh, you know, the coverage is what was worse, so in principle, uh, the the state could be around it. So for this source, so the f it means it means uh, the correlation we found really suggests a hard state regime of non-stationary question origin. And so my suggestion to theory is, it is really to investigate non-stationary question regimes in order to explain uh, the phenomenon we see. For example, black hole spectral state transitions. Okay, so summary. So hysteresis uh, uh, effect of special situations in actual brightness actu actually points to non-stationary equation regimes. And what I mean is that when we talk about QPOs and uh, QPOs variability, we need to remember that all the variability, all the QPOs can occur really in a large emergent range. So that gives some constraints on the models that we need to consider. The other thing is that the lone source parameter, other than the mass rate, and in our case, which we determined is actually the uh, derivative of, of uh, derivative is the dm dot dt. So it's a variation of. So we know if we consider stationary equation, we only consider the mass rate. But if we if, if the term of the variation in the mass rate dominates the term of mass mass rate itself then it means we need to consider the term of dm dot dt. So that's, that's what we uh, reached, uh, okay? Uh, a third is about the uh, black hole uh, pulse, uh, timing, uh, you know, pulse, pulse spectral state. So before, our picture is that like we have a correspondence between anti spectral state and a pulse spectral state. But if we look at in broadband, then the, actually the Pulse spectra actually shows distinct pulse spectra in soft band and hard band. So it really depends on which spectral co component we are looking at. Uh, so, so actually we are resolving parts of the equation system with timing as well. Because we look at different uh, energy bands, then we see different variability components. And that variability component actually tells us about, for example, that this component only gives us a hollow noise. And I don't know whether more information can get. For example, if there's cutoff, whether that cutoff related to uh, transition radius. So that we don't know. So further studies, um, deposition of the broadband power spectra corresponding to the hard or immediate state towards soft energies would reveal, so for example, if there's cutoff frequency or uh, which will improve understanding of the polar noise in the soft state, okay? And also maybe it will tell us about the hard spectral component, component and uh, towards lower energies. Well, it, it tells uh, through the verbally side. Okay, thank you. <laughs>